uh, so nice to, to have Robin Reed. Robin Reed um, uh, and I are both vestiges of ILRAD. Um, Robin came in to put some uh, environmental uh, impacts uh, side to uh, some of our disease control stuff uh, going back. So Robin, it is great to, uh, to be talking to you. Um, we're talking about the, the long shadow of livestock. And I guess the, one is the, the, the bigger picture of livestock's environmental uh, image. And that's sort of been very much brought to our notice uh, by this, lo this book. Uh, and I see you've got a copy. And, and uh, you've got a real copy. And I've got a... Uh, <laughs> how, how many trees uh, uh, have suffered as a result of this report being produced? Uh, but I noticed uh, from Carlos's uh, earlier point, Carlos acknowledged this report, uh, and, he, and he made this quote, some of us participated. Uh, did you participate? Um, no, I didn't, but at first I want to get dressed, if you don't mind. I've always been impressed with Brian and his dressing at these hard talks, and so I want to put on my tie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, hey, stop time wasting, Robbie. That's just, uh, that's just work. <laughs> that was effective. Another 30 seconds gone. <laughs> Did you participate? No, I did not. Why not? Um, because I wasn't asked to participate. Why weren't you asked? I mean, sh is this... Uh, I, mean, I don't know. Should, Ill re is this, should this not have been an Ilry study? Absolutely. Ah, okay. Well, if you say absolutely, why mm. wasn't it? Why wasn't it an Ilry study? Because yes. I don't think we saw it in our mandate to do this study at the time this was done. I think that in the future we will see it as in our mandate. So when you say it wasn't in our mandate, mm -hmm. I mean it was already done before we sort of knew, and, and uh, was it or? Well, okay, for one thing, the report covers the developing and the developed world. You're losing you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to use it. If we talk about gender issues, I can do this. <laughs> this is my foil. Um, and so it's broader than Ilry's mandate. That's one thing. So, so this exact report, I don't think Ilry would have ever produced. Um, because of the, the broadness of its scope. But you think it was very appropriate for Ilri uh, to have been involved? Yes. Okay. Well, we might have to come back to that one. But it's Just because I wasn't involved doesn't mean others weren't. There were others in this room that absolutely were involved. Um, and then I've seen the comments of, there were several people. And so there was quite a bit of commenting that went back and forth. Oh, so there are comments. Uh, because I, uh, an FAO quote I heard the other day from a, a, a reliable source who told me, for me <laughs> that, that Ilri is not supportive or doesn't agree with this, uh, uh, this report, has major problems with it. Is that true? Um, I, I think we'll find out in the great debate that's coming up on Thursday. I'll just try your view. Start off like yeah. That. Is it um, true? Is it true that we don't like the report? I think there's some parts of the report that some people agree with and some that others don't like about this report. And so I think it's a bit, bit of a balanced view um, about this report. Okay. Well, maybe we should possibly go through uh, some of those. Uh, the, the, the report sort of outlines... Uh, the, the positive side of livestock and, and the minus side. So the positive side, the economic importance uh, of livestock, the social importance, nutrition and health and food security. Mm -hmm. And on the negative side, the land and land use change, the gaseous emissions, uh, water use and pollution and, and biodiversity. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that, that that is fair? Does that capture all these different positive and negative issues? Or is there something they've particularly missed there? Um, I think that the balance in the report between positive and negative environmental impacts is, is, is skewed toward the negative. Um, I think that the livelihood issues that we would care a lot about are missing, um, although I'm not so sure it should have been in this report, but um, I think those issues are missing about livelihood. What uh, expand on that. I mean, what particular, because uh, they, they, they talk about uh, the, the, the social importance, the one billion poor, and for livestock, no education is needed, no capital is needed, no mm -hmm. land is necessarily needed, mm -hmm. uh, 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 but it's all there in the report. Mm -hmm. It is all there. It's just, the, it, it's just the matter of how much it was focused on. In other words, most of the report goes in depth into the uh, direct and indirect connections of livestock to the environment alone even though there is some preamble on the livelihood issues and then it goes into the mitigation. So it's, um, it's a report that is from an environmental point of view. And can I 
Can I make a point about this? Would you do you mind? You go okay. on. I'll, I think I'll, that, I'll give you an opinion in a minute. But. All right. <laughs> I don't know if folks remember the green books that League put out about three or four years ago. That, I think, was taken from a human-centric point of view and our point of view, a more of a livelihood point of view. These books are taken from an environmental-centric point of view, and I think that's we have basic values at Ilry that a human-centric point of view is, is really our most important point of view. And so that's where we <coughs> differ with this report. But I think one of the things that, that from our perspective we have to appreciate that there is an environmental-centric point of view, and I think the place that we can take the debate and move it out into a new place is to try to bring down together this human and environmental centric point of view together and take a, a balanced view of both of those areas rather than just going off on a human centric point of view. It's a very different, difficult argument to explain to, uh, to the Western world though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it sure. It's all right, I think many people mm -hmm. here will be sympathetic to that, mm -hmm. but when you're putting that over to the West who are totally uh, obsessed with, uh, with uh, mm -hmm. climate change, mm -hmm. uh, isn't that rather difficult? How would you do it? Well, I think we've started and we've, I mean, for years we've done it. We just, I don't think we've gone up to a high enough level in talking about the nutrition issues in relation to livestock and the safety net issues in relation to livestock, all the livelihood issues. I don't think that we have made that a, a big enough issue, um, high enough on the agenda of, of, of the world and communicated that in a way, um, you know, even at an even higher level. Than well, that nutritional issue is, is, is very important. You say it's, it is mentioned, mm -hmm. about 33% of protein uh, going to the diet, five, uh, and this range of, uh, of consumption, but when you look at mm. consumption in the U.S. at 123 kilograms per head, mm. uh, 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 isn't that? I mean, are we not making enough mileage of maybe pressurizing the West from our point of view to mm -hmm. to uh, uh, decrease some of that uh, meat consumption? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, do well, we, can we play a role in that, or is that out of our uh, totally out of our field? It, it does seem to be a bit out of our field, but actually, if you talk to Michael Blumel, he will argue that we actually need to decrease the consumption of, of meat in the developing world. Um, that would be one of his arguments from the perspective of, um, of some of the resource impacts. So but in India, he certainly won't have a problem with five kilograms per head per year. I mean, there's uh, <laughs> not, uh, not a great, great consumer. I've, I've misquoted Michael, too, and so I'm sorry about that. Where is uh, okay, oh, let's come <laughs> into some of these, let's come into some of these, uh, these negative. I mean, uh, 26 of the ice-free terrestrial surface of the planet uh, uh, has got livestock on it. Uh -huh. uh, much of this area unsuitable for, uh, uh -huh. for crops. Uh -huh. um, I mean, it's a, it, a huge amount. Mm -hmm. Gaseous emissions, 18% uh, uh, of the global warming effect, mm -hmm. uh, much more than... than gases out of cars mm. comes from livestock according to this report. Do mm -hmm. you agree with these figures? Some people don't agree with all the figures in this report. I mean, are these, yeah. are these accurate? Um, I'm not an expert on how these things are, are, are calculated, especially from the climate change perspective. And I've heard and I've read that, that they didn't follow the standard protocol from the IPCC and how you do that. But let's not focus on the, on the problems with the calculation because it's probably, it's probably close to being right. Even if it were half that, or only 10%, it's still a worry. And so um, I think that the value of this report is rather not so much if it's 18 or 10 percent, but that what they did is they took it beyond the animal. I mean, we focused a lot on how the, what the animal does, but it's gone to deforestation and said, yeah, livestock are actually responsible for that. Actually, people are responsible for that. But that in, in a number of, of very indirect connections in the water issues and the biodiversity issues that I think we haven't focused on are very important. And it's one of the things that if you have a little bit of an environment-centric point of view, I've, I feel like I've kind of both, you worry about a lot, it th is these indirect effects of livestock and the environment that they talk a lot about in this report. Can I give okay. you an example? But, 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 just a second, I mean, you, you, you're, the, the deforestation is, is largely South America, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. it's largely Absolutely. South America Absolutely. No. and it's the, driven by uh, livestock and soya. Mm -hmm. uh, we are basically saying, we're not, we're not going to do with South America. Mm -hmm. Hillary's sort mm -hmm. of... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so is this something that we should worry about? Well, I think it's... I, you know, I, 
I don't think that we're going to work on this issue directly, but as um, has been said in a previous presentation, boy, we better know about it. Ian mentioned that. We better, better be at least knowledgeable about these issues and to be able to su suggest a way forward in, in a sort of general way and be part of the de debate. If we miss the debate and we don't talk about it, then we're going to have all sorts of folks coming in and saying, well, why aren't you dealing with that? And, and so we need to be much more educated and have a more high-profile message on a number of these things. One, one thing that worries me a little bit, and you probably will share this, uh, these, but, but, which, worry, which I don't really want you to share my opinions, but, um, uh, the, uh, and that is that on some of the, the small print, for example, the gaseous emissions, uh, very little actually paid in, uh, in respiration of, uh, of, of animals. So burping uh, plays actually a very tiny role uh, compared to these, these terrible figures of 37% of methane, 67% of nitrous dioxide mm -hmm. coming from, from livestock. Right. And the other one on the water, uh, of although 8% of, of global human water use is associated with livestock, right. in fact only 1% is, is, is drinking. Do you think that those, uh, those different contributions are, are, are adequately portrayed in, in the report? Um. I guess I would go back and say that um, I think the value of it is pointing out the connections and trying to put some number, numbers on those issues and raising the debate and being provocative. I mean, look at us. We're all talking about it right now. We're going to talk about it again. And so it's, I think it's very important that those issues be raised. And that's why I wish that we had not done this report, but rather that, that we, would, we would do reports at this level um, on these issues, because I think that we have a lot to say that's very, very different from this report and that I'd like to see us get out there. Okay, I'd like to talk a little bit about what people can do. First mm -hmm. of all, about what the, the world uh, as a whole can do, and then come back to what we can do relating to livestock. Uh, it, the, the world as a whole, uh, we've got this, uh, this concept of carbon credits mm -hmm. uh, so in, in, the, in the environment. So uh, uh, you can, I mean, good old Al Gore, who gives the, uh, this is wonderful Oscar-winning mm -hmm. uh, uh, film, and then we suddenly learned that he spends, goodness knows how many more times uh, <laughs> expenditure on electricity in his own house mm. than, 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 than the whole of the American population or something in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 <laughs> It's just extraordinary. But he gets peak, but he says, no worries, because I've got by that with my carbon credits. Mm. I've given money mm. to mm. one of these companies that is going to, uh, that is going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. uh, is, that, is that valid? I'm sorry. Carbon I, I offsets. Carbon, carbon offsets. Offset. So oh, I, uh, Al Gore yeah, buying yeah, yeah. his green credits, mm -hmm. uh, and he calculates these green credits mm -hmm. on your carbon mm -hmm. dioxide yeah, yeah. Uh, debt. Mm -hmm. Valid? I think that there are places where that's valid, yes. Would you like me to expand? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. You've um, got cool, uh, okay, first of all, expand, uh, mm. and then I'll... Yeah. In other words, I think that, that, yes, we want to try to mitigate. In other words, take some of the carbon out of the atmosphere. It's a question of what. For example, um, trying to sequester carbon in the global rangelands is going to be really hard to do. It's a vast area. It seems like it would be a useful thing to do, but actually it might make more progress in growing trees in higher potential areas, for example. But, um, and so there's a, a range of different things that are you know, more feasible and less feasible to actually carry out. But I think that it's, a, I think it's an important thing to do, and I'd love to see Ilri become car carbon neutral. I know there's been some talk about that, and that would well, be great. Oh, really? I was going to come on to that. I mean, Ilri can go, they do book their... Uh, flights on lastminute.com. I notice you've, they've also got a little place where you can buy, your, buy, yeah. buy some credits at yeah. the same time. There is, a, there is an organization called Clean Air Cool Planet. Do you, are you familiar with that? No. Uh, they've said it doesn't work. Carbon credits doesn't work. Planting trees, installing solar panels, mm -hmm. whatever. They, they, uh, and there's a quote in Nature mm. uh, saying that the calculations mm -hmm. uh, are tantamount to guesswork. Yes. Uh, they, did a, they did a calculation on the CO2 per person traveling from London to Bangkok and uh, yeah. several companies, one calculated at 2.1 tons per, uh, 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 per person, another one at 9.9 .9 tons. Uh, so is it, uh, how do we improve that? Or is it necessary to improve that? Well, I don't think we improve that um, in the first place, meaning us in this room. But um, I mean, I've, sorry, I'm still focusing on the, the global <laughs> response rather than yeah, the yeah. Irish response. Um, 
I'm sorry, how do we include car improve car carbon how do, sequestration? Or what's how the do we improve the, the, the response to that, such as this, this carbon credit uh, uh -huh. scheme? How mm -hmm. do we make it more effective? How do we get the numbers right, etc.? Yeah. Well, I think um, if we get into that area, and I would question whether we would get into that area, I'm not sure we should, but um, there's a number of organizations that have, are thinking very, very hard about this. Um, and, in, and in our sister CG centers, for example, ICRAF and I bet you C4 is thinking about a lot. So I would go to you know the folks that are really thinking about this hard and, and thinking about the, the ways forward rather than sort of starting an initiative brand new from Hillary. But I think that because of the role of livestock in these issues, um, we need to engage with that community at least yeah. um, from the perspective of, and, of knowing the issues. And, and, and raising, yeah. raising yeah. awareness. Absolutely. I got this lovely quote from Friends of the Earth on this uh, carbon credit saying, you might as well uh, try stopping sea levels uh, rising by drinking a glass of water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that worries us, worries me, and, and you were talking about flowers, we were talking about flowers earlier on, and that is uh, many of the, the supermarkets now mm. are going to start to introduce this issue of, of flown. So you'll have a little flown, so the, uh, the, the, the oh, Namibian no, no, beef or the Kenya flowers yeah, 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 or whatever. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Isn't that a terrible thing? for? Uh, how do you balance that? You mm -hmm. as an ecologist mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. our market people yeah, who are looking exactly. for uh, creating those markets, what's the balance? And how does Hillary respond? So what you're referring to is the, is the fact that, um, that when food has a lot of miles on it, often it will come, hopefully, from some of the smallholders going to value-added exactly. markets. Yeah. Exactly, but it'll have that little sticker with an airplane saying, flown. Uh, so uh, dear old uh, Auntie Ethel going yeah, into yeah. Sainsbury's yeah, yeah. will say, oh, I can't buy that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I guess I, in, in the first instance, I want to know if there's actually any of the poor that actually have any of their food flown anywhere. Um, you know, so in other words, um, is that really an avenue out of poverty? And if it is, then why don't we put poverty miles on the food or something like that? In other words, Good put point. the social, you know, put the social part onto these food miles. I think the idea of eating locally, all of us would agree that it would be a good idea to reduce environmental impacts and, and support the people in Ethiopia. We, let's eat locally here. But if it's going to have these other consequences, then let's try to think about those and think about the poverty miles or whatever um, that, that we might be able to No, but that was a good point. Uh, this you on the work to do. <laughs> <laughs> what to do? Uh, in this report, uh, they have they, they what to do in climate change, and there's a whole lot of technical issues: conservation, tillage, organic farming. What to do in water, which is basically water use efficiency and mm -hmm. solid manure management. Mm -hmm. uh, um, biodiversity doesn't say much. Do you are you satisfied with these technical responses? There's not much on the policy side in the in the document. Do you feel the technical responses are all good, sensible messages? Um, and, and if they are, uh, is there something that Ilri can pick up to, yeah. to use in there? Um, I think there's a number of technical responses that look like they're reasonable. Um, and, but there's a whole chapter on policy. I'm not sure you got to it. Number I six. did get to it, yeah. yeah. Um, I just uh, barely uh, got it to this morning, so uh, I, I just good. read it freshly. No, I've but got a couple of some, questions on it. Yeah, up, so. And, the, and so I think there are the policy issues. Um, I, I guess one of my things about this report is how much of it is applicable to the smallholder, you know, to the people that are our clients. <coughs> and so that's a question of, of how much of the manure management um, type of issues um, really apply to the smallholder. Or are they re already recycling most of their nutrients anyway? You know, I mean, pastoralists aren't going to go out there and recycle the dung from their animals or the urine or something like that. It's more in these industrial high intensity systems. So around Addis Ababa, there might be issues that relate to smallholders. So there would be particular places in our mandate where these would be useful, but other places where it won't be useful at all. So we have to really think those through. Um, and then, obviously, on the policy side, there may be some... Okay, policies. well, let's come to those policy ones. The policy, the two main areas that mm -hmm. they, uh, they say of market failures and policy failures, mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the ways of, uh, of uh, adjusting those mm -hmm. are one through regulatory approaches. Yep. In other words, mm -hmm. you, uh, telling people to do things yep. because they are, uh, make them more environmental. And the other one is the economic instruments, in other words, things mm -hmm. like removing subsidies uh, and, and pricing water. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about the environments here and mm -hmm. the smallholders mm -hmm. and all those people, are those realistic? They're basically putting them out of business if we're going to... What is the balance with these sort of... Uh, the, the, the yeah. weight of those types of measures? Well, I think they're missing some of the approaches in, in the first instance. So I don't think it's all about economic incentives and, and regulatory. Although I think they all have, they all have a, 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 you know, a part. 
Um, so from, um, let's, let's take the economic incentives, um, the payment for ecosystem services so that people can, you know, from the, the, the um, lower watershed pay for the services of good clean water from an upper watershed. Those sorts of approaches have problems, but they might be one way to go forward, um, certainly, to, to look at these issues. Um, but then what about the, you know, sort of social and cultural uh, issues and community institutions and, and all those sorts of things that could, can look at some of these issues? And we certainly, this is an area that, that, that many of us work in um, quite a bit. And so I think it's, it's well beyond, you know, economic incentives and command and control regulatory type of approaches. Robin, do you, sort of at the end of, of this uh, little chat, uh, do you feel that you're a bit out on a limb here in, in the Institute in terms of these environmental issues? I mean, here we've been talking this morning about, uh, about competitiveness and about markets and, mm -hmm. and about improving productivity and mm -hmm. improving efficiency. And many of those processes mm -hmm. uh, are in the environments that we're in mm -hmm. are going to have inevitably negative effects on the environment. Uh, well, how d is Ilri adding has Ilri got an adequate balance? Um, well, of course, from my point of view, no. But um, but actually, let, let me back off and say and, and point out one of the words you use, efficiency. I mean, I think uh, you know the whole idea is to produce more meat, milk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, with fewer inputs, and that's less water, and that's less you know nutri fewer nutrients and and feed and things like that that is a fabulous way to in decrease the impacts on the environment so you know moving in that direction which and you don't even have to use the e-word you don't even have to say the environment um, but that's what that that's where we'll go um, there also are some trade-offs and, and there will inevitably be trade-offs but I think that one of the things that we don't do well yet and we've been talking about this in theme five over the weekend and I'm looking again at Michael and Jean and Don and, and Tom was uh, sort of about how can we raise those issues particularly um, in relation to these efficiency issues and sort of kind of make a big deal about it in other words what if what will efficiency gains get us I mean, if the livestock revolution is going is, is gonna to double demand in X number of years, then we have to double our efficiency over the same time just to stay in the same place. You know, so in other words, we're sprinting in trying to keep the environmental impacts just where they are today, much less improving environments. And so I would, I guess I would say I would love to see that come together, and we've talked about that in a sort of more synthetic way and in a, in a high profile way, and not as one way to respond to these kinds of issues raised by the long shot. So it's the importance is the interpretation of this Absolutely. term efficiency. Absolutely. Okay, last you mentioned uh, uh, Ilri becoming um, carbon neutral uh, by a certain period of time. Uh, uh, very interested in that. Do you think we should be actually going out and, I mean, I saw uh, in the same way of Al Gore, the yeah. um, uh, commissioner from the EU who was absolutely hammered because he drives a, uh, uh, some Volkswagen Touareg or something, yeah. one of these, uh, as they call them in the UK, Chelsea tractors. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think we should be asking, uh, asking Carlos to be driving a, uh, riding a bicycle around the place? <laughs> I mean, how do we, how, how are we how, should we be putting over the the, the image more effectively that we take efficiency of the uh, environmental natural resource use uh, seriously. Um, I think we could take so a I think we could take a leadership role, and I and, and Carlos is probably the first one to get on a bicycle, and then we'll be following him. You know, he'll be out there in front. We don't have to worry about Carlos. We have John doing that. <laughs> we have John doing that, right, on the bicycle. But well, I mean, he, here's an example. We seem to have all these water bottles, that, plastic water bottles that we're drinking out of and, and throwing away. Is there another way that we could actually do that so that we didn't actually, you know, create that kind of waste? It's huge. It's really awful. And, and you know, in other words, there's a number of things. And if we got to get a small group together at Ilri that just had an idea of what are, as Phil would say, the low-hanging fruit or the low-hanging mangoes on, on these environmental things, so that we can sort of say, not only do we study environmental issues and, 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 and try to come up with solutions for small holders but as the we're pretty elite in a lot of ways as, as sort of a, that sector of society that we're actually paying attention to it in our own home and cleaning up our own acts a little Good. bit thank yeah? you even in this report they do suggest that you know the use of plastic uh, instead of getting polyester uh, shirts mm -hmm. uh, from uh, from other sources but you get them from plastic bottles now that's the future ah, so maybe we should start a new enterprise excellent. robin thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank you very much thank you. Thank you.